Tonight is the first night of Tick Week, a series of stories about the latest in research and treatment of tick-borne illnesses like Lyme disease. But Mondays are also when we take a closer look at Maine's changing climate, and it just so happens that tonight's story, if you pardon the expression, ticks both boxes. So far this year, Maine CDC has counted 374 cases of Lyme following a record of more than 2,600 cases in 2022. As our winters get warmer, deer ticks are migrating into new areas of Maine and they're carrying a greater amount of disease causing pathogens with them. Tonight, New Center Maine's Vivian Lee shows us what diseases and species of tick experts are keeping a close eye on. Because of climate change, experts say tick season is pretty much a year round problem. Warming winters is leading to much more favorable habitats for different species of ticks, including the Lone Star tick linked to red meat allergies. During every season in Maine, Chuck Lubelchuk is always on the move, looking for ticks, dragging a long corduroy cloth over leaf litter and brush. The vector ecologist at the Maine Health Institute for Research leads teams in tracking ticks in every county in Maine. Researchers are finding established populations in western Maine near the Canadian border. Jackman has deer ticks now where they did not have them five years ago. Um, we are seeing similarly on the opposite side of the state, areas around Holton, Presque Isle and Fort Kent, uh, the ticks are being found in very small numbers. With milder winters, ticks can become active anytime temperatures go above 32 degrees. A cooler than normal March eased activity somewhat, but Chuck says ticks are now out in full force. The Lone Star tick is also on his radar. A bite could cause a lifetime allergic reaction to red meat. Called alpha-gal syndrome, it causes food allergies to beef, pork and other mammal products. Researchers are also looking for the Asian longhorn tick, an invasive tick that can impact the health of livestock. We haven't really found any evidence of those ticks around yet, but you know, you never say never, and I think it's probably inevitable that at some point we will see both of those ticks arriving in Maine. The line is slowly starting to level off, hopefully, um, but these, these emerging pathogens uh, are really steadily increasing. At the University of Maine Cooperative Extension Tick Lab in Orono, researchers have already received more than 400 tick samples this year. For a $20 fee, ticks can be tested for the pathogens that cause Lyme disease and other co-infections, including anaplasmosis and babesiosis. The brown dog tick is also tested for pathogens that cause Rocky Mountain spotted fever, but no cases have been detected in Maine. Let's turn on a second. In April, UMaine researchers started testing for the Heartland virus, which is spread by the Lone Star tick and the Powassan virus, transmitted by deer and woodchuck ticks. In about 10% of cases, the outcome can be fatal. The virus is rare and can cause swelling of the brain, and anyone can be at risk. There have been 15 cases in Maine since 2015. Three have been fatal, the latest being 58-year-old Robert Weymouth. The Topsa man died on May 14th. We don't have easy diagnostics to look for it. And, and unlike the other diseases we talked about, we really don't have any treatment for Powassan virus. Dr. Rob Smith is also the director of the MHIR Vector Borne Disease Lab. He says it's critical that people learn what diseases are transmitted by ticks and the signs and symptoms. You get a, an unexplained fever with flu-like symptoms during the tick season, which is pretty much much of the year now that this is a consideration, particularly if you've been in areas where you think you might have had exposure to ticks. Now, the University of Maine plans to utilize federal funding to send out teams of graduate students and other experts to try to locate these emerging species of ticks. Now, if you're headed outdoors, remember to wear protective clothing such as long sleeves and use an EPA registered repellent and do frequent tick checks. For Tick Week, Vivian Lee, New Center, Maine. We'll have the latest information about ticks and treatment for tick-borne illness and other key resources all on our website and our New Center Maine app. And coming up tomorrow on Tick Week, a closer look at the two fastest growing tick co-infections that are not Lyme.